I've gotten some products to spruce up my cargo area, and today we're going to review them. All right, so let's talk Mach-E and the cargo area where I'm sitting right now. So on the Mach-E, there were basically two problems that I've had with the car since I've gotten it. The first is that if I want to put some stuff in the trunk here and close my hatch, but make it so that people can't see in and see what's in my trunk, I've really only had the Ford privacy cover uh, as an option. Now, this privacy kind of shade came with all models of the Mach-E except for uh, the select trim level, the lowest trim level. Um, but I really have had problems with it since I got the car. This um, privacy cover uh, attaches from here to this hook up here. And it just kind of like hangs out there. It's very loose and fabric-y basically. And if anything hits this, uh, you have any cargo in there that kind of goes up against it a little bit, or you just breathe on it the wrong way, the thing falls off the hooks and um, basically falls down and is basically useless after that. Very poorly designed and just doesn't do the job that it's designed to do. Um, so I basically hated it because every time I put it on, it would just fall off and be just in my way. Uh, really was not something I used at all, but I was still looking for something uh, to cover my um, cargo. If I had something in the back, any valuables, or I was on a road trip, uh, it's just something that I really wanted to have as an option. So now what's awesome is because the Maki is uh, now being made and sold in China, they're starting to become a lot of uh, Chinese made accessories for the car that have been uh, sold overseas, including in the US where I'm based. So. One of these is from AOSK, as well as some other Chinese uh, uh, brands that you can find on AliExpress uh, or Amazon or other outlets. And um, so I have one from AOSK uh, that they provided to me for me to review. So today we're going to take a look at it. So I've actually started yesterday to uh, put it in. And the problem I had when I um, looked at it and took it, uh, took it out of the box is that it came with absolutely no instructions. Uh, so there is no way for me to figure out um, how to put it in other than to go back to the Amazon listing for the product and to read some of the reviews, uh, one of which included a very short video of how the guy put it in his car. So I want to um, show you what I'm doing here to put it in and give you some tips. Uh, when I read those Amazon reviews, uh, the one uh, big problem that they had uh, that uh, people complained about was that the... Um, the uh, mounting points that you put the shade on are just not sticky enough uh, in terms of the tape they use uh, on the double-sided tape they use um, on the parts and I could really see that the tape uh, really didn't look very thick and it didn't look like it um, would hold up so I'm not sure uh, what the story was but I think uh, when a lot of people tried to put it in basically it will come out in a day or so once you put it under some stress of having uh, the shade in there so I decided to uh, try uh, and give this the best chance of staying in. I pulled off the tape that came on the device, uh, on, the, uh, on the mounting points, uh, which are plastic, and I put on my own tape. Um, I used a 3M extra heavy duty uh, double sided tape, I'll put a link to it down below, and I just kind of coated uh, the side uh, that uh, is supposed to be sticky with that tape. So it's not really obvious where these pieces are supposed to go. So hopefully this will help with some really good video and images of this. So uh, there are these two back pieces, which, is, which are where the beam uh, that goes across uh, goes in. And these pieces uh, fit into uh, in the back cargo area where the seatbelt for the rear passengers comes out of. Uh, they've got a little hook that goes in there. And then uh, they kind of hang off of here and follow the curve of the plastic in the car. Now you can see, uh, even though I put this in and I actually like put it under stress overnight or pressure to hold it in there, um, it uh, still isn't staying there totally all the time. It, you can see how it kind of like, see that little sticking noise? It's because this doesn't, the fitment of this is not perfect enough and the curve doesn't really match what's in the Mach-E so that it kind of lifts off from the wall at various points. Um, I don't know how critical this is going to be, though, because I think there's enough tape I put on here throughout the entire surface area that it's probably going to stay in. Um, I've also not put the uh, bar in yet, 
I've left it out for uh, almost uh, 18 hours now. They say that the tape that I used from 3M gets 75% of its strength uh, in 18 hours or 12 hours, I think, 12 hours actually, and uh, full strength after 24 hours. So I didn't want to put in uh, the shade right away, even though I was itching to after I put the stuff in, because I wanted to give it enough time to, uh, to settle and for the adhesive to uh, really latch on uh, to give it the best chance possible of staying in. Um, okay, so you put these two here, one here, and then one here on this side, which you can uh, kind of see right here. There you go. And then uh, in addition to that, you have to kind of figure out where to put these things here. Now, I pulled out the, uh, the shade, which I'll show you in a minute, and I was able to really figure out that it can cover pretty much the entire uh, cargo area. And what I did was I used this line here that you see, and I put the, uh, the plastic uh, piece here flush with that line. So the end of that line where it hits this is actually where the piece starts on both sides. And I tucked it under the weather stripping that you see here uh, to keep it in. Now this has been under, uh, I put, put some, uh, some tape on this overnight to kind of try and hold it in. And you can still kind of hear this. This does not stay on very well in terms of the, the bottom of this. So I'm hoping that this has enough to stay in. It's been like overnight left in here. And uh, worst comes to worst, I think, uh, I'll probably, you know, or if I need to, I'll uh, drill a hole under here, underneath where the weather stripping is and put just one screw in there if I absolutely need to, if this starts coming out. I think this is the piece that's more under stress because it's trying to get pulled this way by the, by the shade that you're latching onto here. And I did the exact same thing as you could see on this side right here. So you can see right here, this piece fits in right here. All right, so if I step outside the car and pull back here, you can kind of see both sides where uh, these new pieces are in. Now, they're a little bit different color and texture than the sides here. But, I mean, I'm not really looking for uh, high uh, fashion in my, uh, in my trunk here. I'm more looking to get the right functionality in. All right, so you can see that this uh, shade is uh, pretty nicely constructed, actually. I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with the shade itself, unlike kind of the plastic pieces, which didn't seem like to have the perfect fitment. This is made out of metal, seems pretty sturdy, um, and it has a mechanism which is basically like a window shade, but with a spring on it. So uh, this pulls out and is under tension and pops back when it's, uh, when it's done. There it goes. All right, now once it's in, this seems to also have plenty of tension against both sides here to kind of push it in. So I don't think this, these uh, parts here at the edge are going, at the end are going anywhere. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, a little bit further up close here. So as you see, this kind of fits right up to the edge here. And uh, you know, I kind of looked in as, uh, as best I could through the tinted windows and you really can't see anything with this thing in here. There's uh, two things here. There's a little gap here. You can see that. There's a little gap between the seat and this, this bar, but I'm not sure how substantial that is and if someone's really going to be looking in from the window and looking at what's right there. You see there's the window right there and there's that. So there's a gap there and there's a little gap here, but I think for the most part this would definitely hide whatever's in my in my trunk and when I'm not using it like this just goes right down there and uh, most of the trunks usable and uh, don't have to worry about uh, even taking the thing out I think so all in all uh, I'm pretty happy with this okay so let's go on to my need number two remember I said I had two needs uh, of uh, uh, things I was looking for for my trunk area the second thing is that you know, I have kids and uh, kids put their bicycles in the back. Uh, we take off the wheel, they fit in just fine. But uh, boy, they ride them all over the place and my back gets pretty dirty sometimes. And uh, I could find uh, trunk mats uh, for the Maki and I have a cargo mat uh, at the bottom here for uh, 3D mats, which I really kind of like. 
but no one has uh, any mat that kind of protects the uh, carpeting on the back of the seats. Let me show you. So here are the back of my seats. And uh, this is, you know, looking at uh, the carpeting in the back of the seats. Here's my cargo area floor, right? And if you look at the back of my seats, like look at all the scratches and kind of just general dirt. And I clean this thing a lot because it really bugs me to have the uh, kind of dirt in my car. I'm kind of OCD in that way. But, um, you know, it's kind of, uh, kind of difficult to keep clean and I wish I had something to protect this. And so that brings me to the second product that AOSK sent me uh, to review today. And it's these seat back covers for your cargo area that do just that. They protect uh, the carpeting that you have and give you a surface that covers that uh, area that's a lot easier to clean. So let's put them on and let's see uh, how those are. All right, so in order to put these in on these seats, you really gotta put the seats down, uh, which I've just done. Uh, before doing that, I had to take out my child seats, which were in the back. And uh, so this is giving me an opportunity to also uh, vacuum out the uh, debris of uh, daily life with children while I'm at it. But all right, so we have the uh, seats down here. And next we're gonna look at these uh, cargo covers them, or these mats themselves and see how they kind of fit on these. So these mats seem to be um, kind of rubberized and they uh, fit almost exactly the contours uh, of the seat backs themselves. So I think they're going to go on relatively straightforward. Um, unlike the uh, uh, plastic pieces for that cargo uh, cover, these seem to be very well made in terms of having Velcro uh, on key areas around the outside and down the middle of this. All right, so let's see if we can get this on pretty easily. It looks like I really needed two hands to do this. So uh, it's got a cutout here that goes to exactly the same contours as the seat. So I think you just got to start from a, an edge that's straight. And uh, this stuff is extremely sticky. I have no, no question that this is going to stay on once it goes on here. You just got to get it on straight. Okay, looks like I've pretty much gotten this straight here. This part is a little bit crooked, so let's kind of put that perfectly straight. All right, this looks pretty good. Now, let's go do the other side. All right, so on the other side, the one with uh, two seats, uh, the 60 of the 60-40 splitting rear seat, I got to do something uh, special because I do have one child seat still, and it needs a rear tether anchor, um, and those are on the back of the seats, if you notice those bars. So what we got to do here is we're going to have to cut out this little itsy bitsy hole that they have here uh, so that I can use that as the tether. So I'm going to go ahead and, and cut that with uh, my trusty uh, box cutter knife here. See how hard that is to cut. Not that bad at all. Let's see if we got to get this through just with that. And it looks like we can. All right, so we got this cut, and now we're going to proceed to put this on in pretty much the same way. All right, pretty much the same way as the other, that I think you need to uh, find an edge and just make that as straight as possible. I started with the top here, as you can see, and uh, this is super sticky, this Velcro, so uh, no question this is going to stay on once, uh, once this goes on here. All right, great. So this looks like it's on uh, well too, and we got access to the uh, tether hole right here, which I'm gonna need uh, when I put the seats back in my car. All right, so here's the finished product uh, installed with the seats uh, up, and you can see it provides really good coverage across the entire area. And there's only like this little piece around the top and the sides here that's still exposed of, uh, carpeting and I really don't think that that's going to be something that's a concern. Other than this, this is going to be great. I'll be able to uh, wipe this down pretty easily. Um, one thing to say about this is this actually follows, I think, the same pattern as the Ford uh, stock interior protection package mat that they have in the back. I'm using a mat uh, that I like that's from a company called 3D uh, Works, I believe. Uh, and uh, so it's a little bit different than this, but I still think that uh, this is the best of both worlds, even if this uh, texture doesn't match this. I think this is much better than having all the uh, carpeting that was getting dirty on, uh, and scratched up. All right, so let me sum up my thoughts on these two products. First, the cargo cover. 
So I think that the cargo cover uh, hopefully will be great. It does exactly what I'm really looking for, which is to have a shade I can easily put on uh, cargo I have there when I want to keep it private. So in that sense, I think this cargo cover is actually really great. When I need it, I can just pull it out. And when I don't, I can kind of store it in the back of my trunk and uh, when it's not in use and uh, doesn't take up much space. There are some negatives, however, I think. I'm not sure whether or not the plastic pieces used uh, to mount this, uh, whether those pieces are gonna stay in place. Um, others have reported that they come out after a, a certain amount of usage. So uh, we'll have to just see if this uh, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of stays. Now I'd say the other thing that um, I really think um, might have to really be considered is, um, you know, this is actually 139 bucks, I think, on Amazon, uh, delivered prime. Now, it, it has to ship in a relatively big box because the thing is kind of the width of your car. Uh, so I understand that, but it is pretty expensive for what it is. And, uh, you know, with it being that expensive, you think they would include uh, some instructions. Um, so there is expense, uh, which you have to really consider. Now, I have less hesitation about the uh, seat back covers that I also uh, put in. Uh, those are $65 uh, on Amazon. Uh, however, I think that they really are well made. Uh, they seem to be well designed. They offer the right coverage on your back seats. And I think they're going to really stay in place with the Velcro that's on them. So, All right. Well, that's it for another episode of The Adventures of Mac and Cheese. What have you been doing to spruce up the back of your car to get ready for spring? Let me know in the comments. See you on the next video.